Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies, who find themselves in Anfield. That's right, we're at we're at Anfield in Liverpool, England. Very exciting, very very exciting for me. This is the John Green Derby, really. Um, I've made Liverpool wear their ugliest jerseys from the 2017-2018 season. Their third kit, which was just like a little bit green. Um, I actually own this jersey. And in real life, it's a masterwork. Oh, boy, they've got some. It'll be fascinating to see who Liverpool ended up with. There's me, Mr. Manager Reno. A couple changes to tell you about in our system. But first, let's get introduced to Liverpool. I don't know who Mesa is. Uh, only one of those guys still plays for Liverpool, Joe Gomez. He's very good, though. Adam Ulana still does, as does Jordan Henderson. And Kira, Kira Vela does, too, just not very often. And then they've got Sadio Mane up front, but not... Roberto Firmino or Mohamed Salah, who is inexplicably on the bench, which is exactly where I want him. So the biggest change to tell you about is that we've brought in Rafa in goal to replace uh, Halderson because as much as I hate Rafa and his inability to dive for any balls because he doesn't like to get dirty, which is, I just think like a bad quality in a goalkeeper, um, he is the best person for the job. Uh, in terms of his overall skill level. Also, we have uh, replaced in, in the uh, the central attacking midfield role what you might, or uh, the, in this false nine, um, we've put in this guy who just was running at the ball because he's been complaining about his playing time. And I uh, I listen to my I listen to my players. You know, I don't I don't let them boss me around, but I do kind of. Oh my God, we are getting played off the pitch right now. Sweet. I mean, what just even happened? Okay. If we're gonna win, if we're gonna win the Premier League, we're gonna have to significantly improve over what over what what just occurred here in the first four minutes of the game. I thought that this was a I thought that this uh, th th this new formation was essentially a cheat code, but not so far. There's John Green cutting inside though. Nope, nope, nope. No, apparently not. I want to talk today about my worst football days. I talked in our last last video about some of my favorite football days. There were many other favorites. I, 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 I've, soccer has brought me such joy over the years and such consolation, too. Like, when I have felt alone, soccer has always been a reminder that I am not alone. Um, when I have uh, when I felt stressed out, soccer has always been uh, a relief for me, a break. Um, you know, I've had, like, occasions in my life where, where people were like... Uh, um, would you like to, you know, be a uh, soccer commentator or something? Like, get it, get it, the goal! Yes, yes, yes. We've. I don't know what happened. Did we score? I think we scored a goal. It was a great run, and then, you know, maybe that Icelandic guy that I've been slacking off so much is pretty good. Lua Lua with a fine finish, but the finish isn't wasn't what was magical about the goal. It was the run. I, I have no idea, by the way, who that guy is. Like. I watch a lot of football, and I have no idea. I, I, I've probably watched 400 hours of football just since December 26th, and I have no idea who that guy is. Um, uh, these days, I watch a lot of Liverpool games twice. That's how bad the addiction has gotten. I watch every AFC Wimbledon game on my phone. Um, but it's just... So, yeah, so football has brought me a lot of joy, and, um, and I, I try very hard... You know, because it should be fun. Like, when people ask me, do you want to do this as a job? Or, like, do you want to take this, like, professional opportunity that's related to football? I always said no, because my feeling is, like, I want... I, like, soccer is, is is the opposite of work for me, and I want it to stay that way. Um, I want it to be enjoyable. I want it to be... I, I want it to be magical, and I want it to be leisure. Um, and so that, that's, all, that's kind of been my guiding principle when it comes to my soccer fandom as well. Like for a long time, especially, uh, I mean, Liverpool went through this awful period where we were, we were owned by these two American idiots. I, I, I think their names were Hicks and Gillette and, uh, they were just, just disastrous owners. I feel bad for every football club with bad owners. I mean, AFC Wimbledon were essentially, uh, Wimbledon were run into the ground uh, by bad owners who stripped the club of its assets and then um, essentially, you know, forced the move to Milton Keynes. Uh, there, there are so many examples like that, though. Of That's a foul, referee. I have been unjustly maligned. So many examples like that of, of terrible owners who've run run clubs into the ground, you know, from, from Barry to Bolton to, uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. There's Jurgen Klopp. God, he's handsome. 
I love him so much. I don't know. I don't think he was really offside, but whatever. I there's very few people in the world um, I love as I love as much as I love Jurgen Klopp. Like I don't know him, but I love him. Um, he's turned me from a doubter into believer. So anyway, during that period when Wim- when Liverpool were so bad, um, I tried to develop a strategy in which I did not get invested in negative football results. And I decided that, like, I was going to watch football and love football and let it bring me pleasure. But that, like, when Liverpool lost to Hull City, um, you know, and and had 42% possession, I wasn't going to, like, let that ruin my weekend. Because I couldn't let my well-being be decide like, the quality of my life be decided by like a group of 27 year olds who lived 4,000 miles away from me, right? Like that's, that's irrational. It's it, like if, if, if you're, you know, being short with your children because of something that happened in Liverpool on Sunday afternoon that has nothing to do with, you know, oh God, it's beautiful. Oh no, everything but the finish. That was a magnificent, magnificent gorgeous everything i loved that i loved everything except for hitting the post the rest of that was just phenomenal we've been playing great this new formation is a thrill it's very it's a little weak at the back it's a little unstable at times but geez louise is it fun so so far so good um and and those so my worst my actually my my worst my worst memories were not when we were at our when we were at our worst either either Liverpool or or AFC Wimbledon um, or for that matter you know the other like other soccer stories the worst moments for me were the moments when I felt like the community was fracturing so like right at the end of the Hicks Gillette era. It wasn't just that there was like a bad vibe among Liverpool fans. It was that like there was a uh, there was a divisive air among Liverpool fans, especially English Liverpool fans and and American foreign Liverpool fans. And oh, my God, I can't believe we didn't give up a goal there. And for some good reasons. I mean, you know, I think that. I, it's a it's a complicated it's a complicated relationship, and I have sympathy for people who, you know, live three blocks from a stadium and have to deal with an international fan base, like have to think about what are they, uh, you know, what are they going to think of this transfer in the you know the global football market. Um, but those divisions became became like really kind of painful and sad. Uh, because for me, like what's what's most enjoyable about football is that sense of community and that sense of togetherness. And when that sense of togetherness gets fractured or it gets challenged, it's really it, it can be really hard and, and even like kind of painful at times. Um, he's onside. He's onside. Is it going to be his first goal for Wimbledon? No. Well, I mean, let's face it. He hasn't had a great game. We're going to bring on Anoma for Vinny Thrill. I love listening to my assistant coach. I think he just does a great job. All right, and then we're gonna try. We're gonna try to like get this ball in and not have it be gotten by the. You know that was progress actually. That was a better corner kick, even though I think it's gonna lead to a goal for Liverpool. That was still like in my top five corner kicks of all time. Um, oh God, panic! Panic at the disco. Everybody's back, and yet I'm I, I'm in a way I'm more worried. Okay, that's good. That's good. Anoma with a nice little bit of play there, and then that's not bad. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is to wait, hold up the play a little bit. There you go. There you go. Patient build up. There. Yes. Hold on a second, guys. This could be happening. It could be on. That's nice. Hold. No. Oh, he got muscled off of it. He's young. He's inexperienced. He's Icelandic. You know, he's going to. That's going to be part of his training is learning not is, is, is learning not to get muscled off the ball. Um, you got to be able, it, if you're going to play for Wimbledon, you got to be able to be a little bit hard, you know, you have to be a little bit of a tough guy. So we're going to work with, uh, with our Icelandic pal on that issue. Here we go though. It's going to, it's going to go to what, where it's going to go is it's going to go, wait for it. Go, 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 go. Oh, he's in. Oh, he scored a goal. He has scored a goal for Wimbledon. He's overjoyed. Look at the happiness on Omarson's face. Son of Omar. 
Father of... Oh, he's doing push-ups. Push-ups. He's doing push-ups. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. This is my favorite son of uh, Aldo. Son of Omar. Father... Do they do that when you... when when In, in Iceland. D when you become a father, do you stop being Omar's son and you become like Father Omar? I'm not sure. I don't... Do you keep your same surname your whole life? I don't know. I... 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 I I love Iceland and I love Omar, son, son of Omar. He's my favorite player we've ever had, starting now. Just f forget Dicko. I've got there's a new hero in town, and his name is Son of Omar, Omar, son, Omar, son, son of Omar. That's his name. I gotta hold on. I'll get his name right. Oh, okay. We're playing great. We're gonna win. We're beating Liverpool. We've won two straight games. The ma there's magic in the air. So, and then, you know, like the most in a similar vein, the most difficult days for for Wimbledon, for me, that I witnessed, I mean, I know that I, I, I can only imagine how difficult it was, you know, in the late 90s and early 2000s as everything was falling apart um, and, and your, the club was being stolen away from them. Um, but from when I started following them, which was just before they got uh, back into the Football League in, in 2011, um, the hardest time actually has been quite quite recently as, uh, you know, both like struggling with uh, the possibility of relegation year after year after year after year, right? Like, I mean, there's just like constant relegation battle. And then also, oh, come on, Trotter. You've got to shoot. You've got to be able to get that shot off in that situation, my friend. So there's that. And then... Um, and then having these really significant financial problems around the stadium. So for those of you who don't know, Wimbledon uh, are, are trying to build a stadium um, that will take them back to Wimbledon, back to their um, historic home uh, right across the, the street, basically, from where the old Plow Lane Stadium was and fought for many years to get official approval and, and, and to find the right partners and everything. Um, and it finally all got approved, uh, but but there's been a, a really significant budget shortfall caused by a big variety of factors from Brexit to, to many other things. And, um, and so now it's not clear what the path forward is, and, and, and they've, the, the fandom has had to like think about, well, do we, do we take some kind of foreign investment? Do we, um, or, you know, or do we have owners? Oh my God, he scored again. He's Omarson, 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 son of Omar. Look at him. Look at him. Look how he loves. He's, he's celebrating in front of the Liverpool fans. That's not polite, but I love it. I love it. I, he's from, from never playing to cult hero in a single Liverpool game. Three nil up at Anfield against arguably the best club in the world. This has been a magical game. This 4-3-3, three, three, false nine, my friends. Go back and play FIFA 18 and watch the cheat code unfold. This is magic. Um, so, yeah, I just really, I really, really hope that Wimbledon find a way through this so that they can have the stadium that they need to progress as a club and also to be home where they belong. Um, you know, and, and Sarah and I have, have invested in the club, and, and I know lots of other Wimbledon fans have too, and... Uh, hopefully together we can figure out a way to make it work, but it's been it's been hard for sure. So uh, those are my toughest days as a football fan. I know that today, however, is one of my best days as a football fan because uh, the the Wimbley Wombleys are on their way back to the top, my friends, and it's all because of Omarson, son of Omar. Best wishes. <laughs>